This is another sign of the times, an analysis and a commentary. Mars is a part of the future of humankind. From ancients who worshipped the red planet as a fierce war god and the sky, to scientists and science fiction writers like Ray Bradbury, Mars has taunted Earth's adventurers with the ultimate challenge. Now that the fear of imaginary invaders has been replaced by a frustrating search for the slightest evidence of life, a more fundamental question is emerging. Could humans walk the sands of Mars and actually live and work there? That's what NASA's $2.5 billion Mars Curiosity rover is trying to determine as it rolls heroically across the rugged but achingly desolate Martian landscape, placing humans on a cold planet currently 173.5 million miles away is a question not just for poets and philosophers, but for planners and policymakers. The critical importance of curiosity is because it's not the first but it's the most critical, the largest mission that's a precursor for putting humans on Mars. The first manned visits could happen around 2035 as an international endeavor. The first outpost on Mars could come after 2060 or somewhere in that range. Mars has captured the human imagination, certainly, since people started gazing up at the sky. Right now, there are really very few places that humans could actually go and live someday. Mars is one of those. Still, as the nation debates its goals for space exploration in a post-space shuttle era marked by an increasingly tight-fisted Congress and endless deficits, how improbable it is that the proposals even are being made. Consider John F. Kennedy's ambitious goal, announced 50 years ago last week, to put a man on the moon involved a trip of a mere 239,000 miles. Getting to Mars, even at its closest point to Earth, means a trip more than 140 times further, lasting some 200 days, and with the possible bombardment by life-threatening radiation, even if all goes well, what would they find once they arrive? The day the first explorers set foot on Mars, a ruddy dust hanging like a curtain in the sky would tent their every view. If they stood where curiosity is now, the sun would look less than half as large as it does from Earth. Temperatures would range from merely freezing during the day to minus 103 degrees Fahrenheit at night. Trying to take a breath would kill. The faint carbon dioxide atmosphere so thin it would count as a vacuum on Earth. Radiation rakes the surface in doses stronger than the astronauts receive aboard the International Space Station. The equivalent of at least 240 chest x-rays in a six-month stay. The gravity on Mars is only 38% of Earth's walking or bounding could be Mars' first challenge and an eventual Olympic sport. Phoning home would be rare. The distance from Earth to Mars varies from 33 million to 249 million miles. It would take anywhere from 3 to 21 minutes to transmit hello, even at the speed of light, making for stilted conversation. And for two weeks every two years, Mars and Earth are on opposite sides of the Sun. Communications might be impossible at that time. Some plans call for prefabricated Martian habitats to be launched two years before astronauts themselves begin their journey. Once secured on the surface, astronauts would spend their days on Mars brewing methane fuel and oxygen 
from water and carbon deposits, but evidence suggests remain locked under the Martian soil. For all that, NASA spacecraft have revealed a red planet that looks more hospitable, with caves, water, and minerals than the dusty picture painted by the 1970s Viking lander missions which transmitted images of a sterile desert. And, as NASA's Curiosity rover makes its first tracks, exploring, sniffing, and zapping the surface of Mars for signs that life once graced the red planet in the past, the panoramas it reveals are of a planet that looks not unlike the high deserts on Earth. What Curiosity learns about the weather and radiation hazards of Mars will help determine how manned landings play out. Just getting there would be a triumph. The trip could take 200 days with Martian stayovers ranging from a month to 500 days. In 2011, the European Space Agency's Mars 500 project isolated six men for 520 days in a simulated Mars trip, and several cosmonauts have experienced long stays in space, one of them spending 14 months in microgravity. I think there will be good circumstantial evidence that people will be able to tolerate a Mars mission when the time comes, says space psychologist Nick Canis of the University of California, San Francisco. Radiation storms, which are known to affect telecommunications even on the atmosphere-shielded Earth, are the more immediate worry, especially in the barely there atmosphere of Mars. A radiation detector aboard the rover already has collected months of data about hazards astronauts would face from cosmic rays and solar storm radiation on their trip to Mars. Sitting down in the belly of the spacecraft, the rover had about as much radiation shielding as astronauts have on the International Space Station, says Donald Hassler of the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado. He heads the rover's radiation instrument team. Astronauts could hide from solar storm radiation and shielded parts of a spacecraft or lander, Hassler says. Based on readings from Curiosity, we are finding the radiation from solar events is significant, he concedes. Even with shielding, Mars travel poses lifetime radiation risks. The rover's radiation measures also tell scientists how deeply microbes on Mars and astronauts might have to hide under the surface to escape those effects. Would people from Earth have to burrow below the Martian surface to survive? So, is Mars worth the risk? It's not so crazy to talk about astronauts visiting Mars, scientist Hassler says. It really is a question of when we decide to do it. It engages human fascination. A Dutch reality television show effort, Mars One, has announced a plan to send colonists on a one-way trip to Mars starting in 2023. The group's website, Frequently Asked Questions, list begins with, Is this for real? To which it answers, Yes, it is. Whether government-funded, privately financed, or some reality show adventure, it is not an unreasonable question to ask whether 30 years from now will people have been to Mars. It is a possibility, verging on a probability. Physicist Stephen Hawking has called for human colonies on Mars in the next century as a safeguard against catastrophe on Earth. We'll need a colony of the Red Planet for the next century, he suggested, given the way things are going on the Blue Planet. In cosmic terms, Mars is achingly close, and the technology seems to be there, at least 
judging by the remarkable success of rovers like Curiosity, if and when the call to Mars comes, there will likely be plenty of volunteers, says a former space shuttle pilot. In other words, Mars is a part of the future of humankind. Mars is a stepping stone to the stars. And this too is another sign of the end of times as we know them, transition days, which is a time of extraordinary changes, happenings, and events, because it's about what kind of world or worlds are we leaving to the future generations. Genesis chapter 1 verse 6 And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. 7 And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. 8 And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. 9 And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Daniel chapter 12 And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which stands for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awaken, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness, as the stars forever and ever. 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Yes, it's time for the manifestation of prophecy. Everything is connected and everything is numbered, and these are more signs.